Hmm. G'day everyone, Greg here from Fishbait Films and welcome back to the BNSF Birdwood Subdivision. Hey, well, today we're stepping it up a notch and we're getting a bit more electronic and crazy and we are installing and programming a NCE Switch 8 Mark II. Uh, this is a new version of the original Switch 8 that have been very popular and it's got a couple of new features and programs slightly different than the old one. So uh, we're going to get in, into this program it and switch a couple of tortoises, a couple of turnouts. Now what is a switch decoder? Well that's what it is, it's basically a decoder, it's the same as your locomotive, uh, it's connected to the track and instead of running lights and sound it runs switch machines. Now it can run tortoise machines, uh, they also say uh, switch master and other low current machines. So it may do servos, I'm not too sure, but it won't do cobalts, it doesn't like them and it, of course it won't do the Pico snap action twin coil machines it's for a stall current machine it's a current low current stall machine that goes over and keeps the power on like a tortoise or something like that so uh, it basically is eight decoders in one this actual the whole doovie here doesn't have an address itself but each of the eight outputs for eight switch machines they each have an address that you will put your turnout number in which is what you would normally use Normally from the factory they come, default program is 1 to 1 to 8, uh, but of course you would change that and we'll do that once we hook it up. Now, it says here that it will switch 8 switch machines, 8 tortoises, or switch master or whatever. Now, the maximum output for each of the outputs here, maximum current output is 40 milliamps. Now your average tortoise mine here draw about 15, 16 milliamps each. So the maximum is 40 milliamps. And NCE don't say that you can't run more than one, but they don't say you can. So the main question that gets asked is, can I run a crossover, as in two turnouts, off the one output? And of, of course, yes, you can. The NCE don't say you can't, but they don't say you can. I guess that's for warranty purposes and stuff like that. But your average tortoise, as I say, mine draw about 15 milliamps, so that's 30 milliamps for your crossover for two machines, and that's well under the 40 milliamps. And of course, you wouldn't put a crossover on two outputs because then you would have to have two separate addresses. So uh, you would run a crossover off one address. So off, off one pair of these connectors here, you could run two switch machines for your crossover. Uh, so no more than 40 milliamps. You can use this to run anything that draws 40 milliamps or less. If you want to run, I don't know, a windmill or something, you could run any little motor or any relay off of here as long as it draws 40 milliamps or less and because it's connected to the track and you can switch it. And that's the beauty of these uh, switch eights well, and the switch its as well, which are the uh, for two machines, a smaller version. You can sort of run your layout without a JMRI panel. You can have someone sitting in the corner, that's what I'll be doing, with a cab, with a throttle, and they can throw all the turnouts from that cab. So it's sort of an interim uh, measure until you get up to having JMRI or something like that and having a dispatcher's panel, which you still use this, uh, but in the meantime, you can use your cabs as a dispatcher's panel. So it's a great, great idea. You can sort of half get there, you know, instead of uh, having the full on dispatcher's panel, you can have Give someone a cab and send them outside with a long lead. Put them in the toilet with a long lead and say, there's your bloody cab, where you go? So yeah, it's great. And they are super easy to hook up, which we'll get to in a minute. Here is the a diagram. And very simple. Up here we have track connections. Now it's connected to your track for two reasons. One is obviously to power the unit, but two, most importantly, that's where your comms come down through, or as we call it in the railways, your telemetry or your protocol. That's where all your information comes through your track. So that is your track connection is your comms connection and also your power. Now, if you're running a lot of turnouts, like in a big club or something like that, you may not want to run all your tortoises or switch machines off your track bus. Uh, so you can, in this little doobie here, put in your wall wart, as you call them over in America, or a plug-in AC adapter, uh, I think it's about 10 to 15 volts DC you can put in there. Let me just check that. I should have done that in my briefing, shouldn't I? Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, oh, there you go. 9 to 15 volts DC. I thought it was 10 to 15 volts. Anyway, shove a 12 volt 
DC power adapter in there. Center pin positive. I think it's pretty sure it's center pin positive. Yep, center pin positive. Your normal plug-in DC thing into there. And that will power all your switch machines and it will power the unit. But you still need to have the board connected to the track because remember that's where your communications come down so you can still have you connected to your track for your communications but the power can be driven from a external dc supply a power supply of some sort which you can hook up a whole bunch of these to that 112 volt dc supply and that way if you short your track out whatever track section this is on remember if you short the track out you will lose power to this but i have been told and i guess i should try it that if you're using the NCE uh, electronic circuit breakers. If you trip the circuit breaker, the circuit breakers are smart enough to stop the uh, current, but they still let the protocol through. So therefore, if you were running one of these from an external power supply, and you shorted the track section, or the, the track block, that you were getting your comms through, the comms would still come through and your turnouts would still work. So that's up to you whether you want to power it separately or not. For me, I'll be using track power because I've only got a few, you know, I think I've got 20 turnouts or something on the, the lower level. So we won't be getting, drawing too much, let's say, 20 at 15 milliamps each. That's only 300 milliamps. That's like two locos, uh, if that. So anyway, there you go. So we'll, we'll uh, get into here now and we'll show you the hookups and we'll do some programming because it's very, very simple transfers. So here we have our Switch 8 Mark II installed. We have our track connections coming in here off our DCC track bus. Now remember there for communications and for power, if we were going to use the optional DC, DC power supply, we would plug it into here, uh, somewhere between, what was it, uh, 9 and 15 volts DC. And these connections here are for your push-button panel. Now the old normal Switch 8 and the switchets if you wanted to put a push button on there for manual operation, you would have to connect them to a mini panel, uh, which is another a board similar to this for all inputs, uh, which is more expensive. But what they've done with the Mark II version of this is you can buy yourself a push button panel, which is a smaller little panel, and that wires up to these three or these three here. And all for that little panel, you can put toggle switches or push buttons. So it's a more uh, inexpensive way, an easier way to put manual control or your decoder. So down here, we have our connections for our switch machines. So we've got eight channels or eight decoders uh, across here, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. And of course, two wires for each, positive and negative for each. And your 15 volts that comes in is converted into 12 volts DC for here. And each one of these four pairs, or sorry, eight pairs is a decoder address. So that's what we will be addressing for each uh, turnout or each tortoise switch machine. So if you're going to do a crossover with two machines off the one, you would, the easiest way would be to come out of your positive and negative here, A and B on whatever channel, and go through to your first tortoise machine and then go from that tortoise machine daisy chain to the next one, rather than bringing both wires back here. And you'll have to muck around with the polarity as well to see which way you get. Now, if the polarity is the wrong way when you hook these up, you can go into the CVs and reverse the polarity, but honestly, it's much easier, 30 seconds, to swap the wires around. That's, in my opinion, that's the easiest way to go. But if for some reason you want to do it with uh, the CVs, you can, but anyway. So we've got one tortoise hooked up here and we've got another turnout hooked up here. Uh, this one, this second one here is uh, one that we need to program. I've already done this first one. So this one is on output two A and B. So let's, let's program that one. So it's really easy. The old one had a rotary dial that you would turn. This one, we push this button here, and you see this LED comes on here. And we get a number one up showing on our dial up here. So that's showing that we're programming output one. We don't want to do that. We want to program output two. So push it again, and it comes up number two. Now if we keep going, obviously, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and if you go to nine, our decoder goes back to being online and I've got our um, little toggles there showing that everything's uh, good. So what we'll do now, we'll go back again. We don't want output one, we want output two or channel two. Happy with that. And we go up here to uh, program selected output and we press that and we get our flashing P. Now that sends it into programming mode. And when we get our cab and we go in and select accessory, because remember this is an accessory, 
it will come up showing that it's in program mode. So let's do that. Okay, we have our flashing P here. So now we get our cab and we go select accessory. Where are we? There we go. Select. I've, I've pro, uh, pushed select accessory. And you can see it's already flashing, so it knows it's in program mode. And over here, it's got what address has it got there? Uh, 108. I should have picked a cab that didn't have a display problem anyway. Uh, this says power cab, but actually, it's my old power cab. We are using the pro cab here. So our button's still flashing. Our P is still, we've got about a minute. So I want to put in 109. So I'll put in, uh, where are we? 109. Yep, that's it. And I'll press enter. Or I'll enter. There we go. And now if I throw this, if I press number one. Oops, where we go? It's gone. Oh, okay. Now. We go. Now let me see. We just check to see if we've got it right. So what I'll do, I'll go along here. Go to eight, nine. We'll go toggling again. And if I go select accessory. Oh, where are we? One, zero, nine, enter. If I go two. Oh, there we go. I heard a noise. And then if I go select accessory again. Now it's come up one, zero, nine. It's come up one, zero, nine again. If I press that again it throws it back to normal because it knows that's the one that we were on before. And that is it. So let's try that again. Select accessory. It's come up 109. Press enter. Uh, I'm going to go one to normal. No, it's already normal, so it knows that. Okay. Uh, select accessory, 109. Enter. Two for reverse. There we go. And that is it. Okie dokie, let's try this and throw a switch. Uh, where are we? Select accessory. One, zero, eight. Eight. Thank you. Enter. Now, here's our switch here. It's in normal. So we want reverse. So let's hit two. Oh, there we go. Let's try that again. Now, if you hit select accessory again, 108 will come up. Let's see if we can do both of these things at once here. And then if you press enter. Sorry. If you press select accessory and hit it again. There we go. We go across to normal. So just to recap, let's go through that programming sequence again. Let's say I've done uh, these two. Let's say I want to program output number three now. So same thing. We said select output. One, two, three. Yes. Then we go number three is up here showing you which one you've got selected. Boom. And you can see, there we go. We're flashing here to say that it's ready to program. It's ready to put the program in for that address, to address that decoder. Put your number in, press enter, and you're all good to go. That's how easy it is. And then when you're finished, you can either press that, or press your little toggle button here, take it back to our center position, and we get our toggling little indicator up there, and that is it. That's how easy it is, folks, to program a switch eight and same as the switch switch it switch eight mark twos well there you go a success now another thing if you forget your address for a certain output you can press the select output key and we've got position one here or output one and you can see up here our display is saying one zero eight just flashing one zero eight and then if we go along to output two that should go 109. Yep. And if we go to output 3, 110. Oh. Now that's just my numbers. They won't necessarily obviously be in order like that, but that's, that tells you what address you have on that output. So that's very handy. And then to get out of that, 
that will go out of it by itself anyway, but if you want to clear that, you just have to go all the way along to eight, and then go one more, and then you get back to your toggles here, which shows that everything's working. Hmm. Right, well, there you go. So that was a successful test today on our NCE Switch 8 Mark II. Been doing a couple of voltage readings, which is quite interesting. Uh, no load, the terminal sit at about 12 volts, and under load with the tortoise connected, they dropped down to about 10, which is, I thought, a bit odd, uh, considering this, I uh, tested how much current and, and my uh, couple of tortoises here were drawing about 15 milliamps, so nowhere near, obviously, being a problem. Uh, and then when I actually throw it through a tortoise, the voltage went up to almost 12. So I don't know whether they have a uh, like a soft voltage there so the tortoises aren't running flat out when they're just sitting there and then when they run, when they're actually switching, they run on 12 volts and then when they stop switching, uh, they go back to 10 as like a maintenance voltage so they're not drawing as much current and not uh, have as much heat in the motor. I don't know if, if that's the way it is, if anyone knows uh, NCE, I guess I could email them, but it's pretty tricky if you're doing that. And of course, a uh, tortoise will run from, you know, 7, 8 volts up to over 12, so it's not a problem for the machine. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting that they're sitting at about 10 volts, and that's all the way through. All the eight, uh, with no load, they're about 12, which is what you'd expect, and then I thought the, it would regulate the 12 volts, but it doesn't. It, um, it sets it down to about 10, 10.2 roughly, when the tortoise is just sitting there. And, and when it's actually throwing, it goes, the voltage rises to throw it up to nearly 12 volts. So interesting. Anyway, great little unit. Super easy to program, as we've just found out. If I can do it, you can do it. And I just have to finish this now and put a few more wires on. And we'll have that going uh, oh, over the weekend. We'll get it finished and we'll be able to do some semi-dispatching around the lab. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something for all us newbies out there, new DCC stuff. And we'll catch you on Birdwood Sub very, very soon. Here, bye for now.